Hi there and welcome back to another episode of the 32 Bit Rant and today we will be looking at my new laptop. So this is what I purchased, an HP Omen 15 laptop with Core i7 something or other and an RTX 2060. It was a, a big investment to say the least. <laughs> anyway, um, let's switch it on. Ooh, see, a keyboard all lights up, which I thought was a really nice feature of this, especially if you're gaming in the dark. You can set this via software as well, which I'll demonstrate later on. And we're in. Alright, well, first of all, it's got a nice button here where you can bring up the command centre for the laptop, which gives you the ability to launch your games and control your laptop. You can look at your temperatures, give it a second, it'll adjust. See, this one's not available because I'm using my integrated GPU, it's got hybrid graphics. It's got undervolting if you really want to do that. A network booster, which prioritises your software. Lighting, I can set this. So let's say I want to put this one to red, it might not show up well, but no, it changes the car. You can set custom profiles here which means that when you you can have the keyboard change color for different games obviously it's got performance control if you set this to max the fans go off the rocker the fans can get really loud like so right answer so that's as loud as it gets but i just leave it on auto which means it's less likely to sound absolutely really loud and it's obviously got a graphics switch and I keep it on hybrid to save my battery a wee bit and I've got so it will switch over from the integrated to the discrete graphics if it needs to depending on what you're running Um, obviously it comes with other software that I've removed because I'm not a fan of the bloatware oh what have I done anyway um, yeah so I like the keyboard don't know if you can hear this. It feels really nice to work with. So we'll go to WordPad. Type hello in. Bear in mind I'm trying to type with one hand here. I'm usually a lot quicker. So you get the idea. Um, not only that, but this has this got a nice touchpad on it. It's quite a big touchpad. There's my quite a good span um, I don't like the fact there's no physical buttons here but that's just me because they're all like this now um, so I went that one step further and got one of the I dug out my wireless mouse which means I can do this it's actually got a really good screen as well because it uses a 144Hz screen as you can see the laptop has a charging port ethernet, USB and HDMI. Further down on this uh, left hand side we have an audio port and an SD card slot which just takes you know, SD card. Um, it's got vents all over the place. There's some on the base, there's some on the back. That's for your speakers. Yeah. And then we'll put it on its back. There's no ports on the front. However, I think this kind of edge design here is very reminiscent of ThinkPads. That's my opinion though, like IBM ones. On this side we have a USB-C or Thunderbolt, can't remember, I need to look it up, a mini display port and another vent and it has two USB ports here, one of which I'm taking up with my wireless mouse. So again, talking about the screen, it's 144 hertz, 1920 by 1080, it's really quite crisp. Might not show up too well on the camera, but this is really accurate. Uh, the refresh rate is amazing. It's definitely an upgrade for what I was using before. As you can see, it's got an i7 uh, 10750H CPU running at 2.6 gigahertz, but we'll also go to 5 gigahertz. It's an in Obviously, it's an Intel. It's got 16 gigs of DDR4, 2400 RAM, I believe. 
um, and in the device manager you will find the gem that is the RTX 2060 all perfectly functional <laughs> well you might ask me what was the actual point in upgrading this laptop and I'll tell you I'll tell you why exactly basically my old laptop was a Dell Latitude E6540, right? Core i7 4800 and an AMD Radio and HD 8790. Now, that sounds really decent. In fact, it was decent. The only thing was running a lot of games that would get like, ridiculously hot. This, that laptop keeps, the new one keeps cooler, but the old one, I could see it going up to like 90 degrees and then thermally throw it one to 100 megahertz. And the performance just wasn't great anymore. It struggled when I had it. I tried replacing thermal paste, I cleaned it, I gutted it, I hosed it down nearly. Um, it just wouldn't play well, so I thought it was time to upgrade, plus there was keys coming off. It was hemorrhaging keys off the keyboard. Um, so, talking about the HP again, the new one, what do I miss? What do I not have that kind of bugs me? Well, for a start, it doesn't have the uh, DVD drive. I do actually miss it, I know a lot of people will say, you don't need a DVD drive, just get an external one. But it's not the same as having one built in. <laughs> That's just my thoughts anyway. I don't know, you people might be more partial to having an external one, you know, via USB, but I still quite like a SATA one built into my laptop. Well, there we go. I had a look at the laptop. It runs my games significantly better. I'm getting 100, 200 FPS and most of my games, Minecraft runs at like 500 frames per second. It's absolutely insane. So, yes, I'm very happy. I can edit my videos using this thing. I use my Windows Movie Maker still. <laughs> um, and I'm, I'm overall pretty pleased with the result. I paid, even after I paid an absolute fortune for that laptop. Um, with it costing me £1,249.99, yes. So, anyway, thank you very much for watching this episode of the 32 Bit Rant, and I hope to see you all in the next one sooner or later, probably. So, good night.